So Manakshi, tell us about um, the projects that you've got going on right now. What's happening? Uh, we, uh, we have a lot of interiors, interior projects, residential interiors going on. And there are a couple of projects which we are doing abroad as well. So one is again in London and uh, the client is from India. So we got to know about them through a relative of them. And they were like, they want to get their house done, but they don't want the typical designing, which is uh, very modern or uh, very English as such, as they call it. And because the colors which are used in London are very muted and very subtle pastel colors and all those kind of colors are used. And they wanted a little bit of touch of Indianism in the in UK. So they were like looking for someone who could help them out with interiors, uh, who is connected to India and uh, still could help them out a little bit. So how we went doing about that is like, because I didn't have to, uh, go to UK for the consultation. We were just doing the consultation. They were going to get everything made over there. They had some mm -hmm. vendors. They had uh, recognized who could actually work on the concepts we give. So what we did is, um, surely we worked on the color palette was the first thing because obviously that is a very prominent feature in Indian architecture that there are a lot of vibrant colors. So they are fuchsia mm -hmm. pink and there is maroon red and yellows and saffron and all those colors but not to make it overpowering also because uh, India is a very sunny country and there is a lot of brightness and light and London is not that sunny and it has, right. the weather itself is quite uh, toned down kind of and it's quite cloudy and that, that kind of weather. So we can't really use those loud colors as prominently as we can use in India because it'll, it'll be too much and very hard right. to handle. So what we did is uh, first and foremost, we did a color palette for them. And then the furniture part, uh, which we have done is all modular furniture, but it has a little bit of carving into it. And it is done in all de-stress de finishes, like white with uh, gold de-stress or just white de-stress materials. So which add to the ethnic touch to the overall look and feel. And uh, that is how we went to go about it. And then we shipped couple of paintings from here. There were certain fabrics, like uh, there are uh, different, different state which has different fabrics specialized. So like if you go to South of India, the silk is quite famous. They have really intricate work done in silk. And if you go to Gujarat, there is Bangni and all those things. If you go to Punjab, there is Fulkari. So there are different, different fabrics in different parts of India. So we ship those fabrics to them so that they could just frame, like how Tracy has a background with just frame stuff. There's no, not really any artwork going into it, but it's, it looks pretty and uh, it gives a character to the place. So those sure. fabrics were framed and put into different places. So it gave a really good background to it. And uh, that is how we got India into UK all the way over there. We, like, and it was obviously not very high on their pocket as well because they didn't really have to do up the whole place. They kept the place mm -hmm. as is. They have a nice sunroof and everything. And it uh, surely enhances the beauty of the Indian artifacts which we send and the fabrics which we send in. So that is how we went about doing it. Oh my God. I got to say, this is what I love. It's like you can feel the passion you have about designing that room that you had. It's like, because um, this is something that I'm noticing is like when we... Um, ask questions, everything people will answer, but then there'll be the question that unlocks that. And that is exactly, and I love the way that you were talking about sunlight. I talk about it all the time. You've got to take into consideration how much natural sunlight your area looks, you know, has. So I love that you took it to the next level by understanding the importance of the nuance of the sunlight that you're surrounded by. I just love that. And you explained that India is bright and sunny. So of course your colors are rich and bright and vibrant. And then though, to put those into the UK overcast, you know, lower light would just be like nails on a chalkboard. But because you're the expert and you know how to, how to get that flavor of India without overwhelming the UK, I think that's just fabulous. So thank you for sharing. I just loved watching you talk it was like i could see it just working in your head that's that's passion i love it thank you thank you 
And I have a question for you as well, Manakshi. It's about other design styles. Um, the last time that we spoke, you talked about a Moroccan themed home. And when you mm -hmm. said it, I thought I would love a Moroccan themed home. <laughs> she talked about it later. <laughs> she did. <laughs> It would be so cool. So tell us, what are some of the themes that you do for people in India? Yes, there are a lot of themes. As I said, like because now people in India are very well-traveled and they have explored a lot of things, there are a lot of themes which we can actually propose them. Previously, it would be like, we don't even know how it looks like. What are you proposing to us? So because people have traveled and they've actually seen those things, they know how they look and feel seeing something in the photographs is different living in it is different so uh, mm -hmm. of course that helps and uh, certain themes which are very um, as we say very popular in India are Scandinavian theme because it's quite minimalistic as we uh, last time also as we spoke that India has a lot of dust issue and Scandinavian is the answer because it's very minimalistic the colors mm -hmm. which are used are very pro India as we call it like there are a lot of wood which is used in it, even though it's subtle light colored wood, but uh, mm -hmm. wood is easily available. So that helps again. And people in India have a fascination towards wood and veneer and using all of that. So mm -hmm. it uh, like it, it achieves the best of both worlds. So Scandinavian is obviously a different theme, but then it has a touch, a earthy touch, which we need over here as well. So Scandinavian mm -hmm. is one of the popular theme. Next is minimal contemporary, which is uh, again very uh, popular. Again, because it is minimal and lesser maintenance is required. People here are working, like there are nuclear families where husband, wife are working, kids are in school. There's no one to take care of the house. So contemporary mm -hmm. minimal helps with that, that there is very mm -hmm. minimalistic furniture. And um, it is uh, whatever finishes are used are, very smooth finishes. They're not very textured finishes. They're glossy, smooth finishes, which are used. So again, it's very maintenance free, a lot of glass, chrome, and all those things used in that. So very easy to maintain and clean up. So that is again a very popular theme in India. If uh, people want to go with a little more intricate kind of a theme where there are like big houses and they have good space. So Moroccan is also a very interesting theme and which is very popular again. Even French is coming out quite well. It is more in commotion, like hotels and resorts and all those things. But yes, people are exploring in French themes, even Italian uh, architecture as well. Like if in Italy, if you see, the houses are all white and there's a tint of blue or uh, orange somewhere in between. So something like that uh, will show mm -hmm. you there. There's a, a restaurant over here named Amsterdam, which is the exact replica of Amsterdam. <laughs> you won't believe. So it is the exact replica. So you have that uh, pathway with uh, the river flowing and the bridges and everything. It's all there in that one restaurant, one small restaurant. So yeah, all those themes do come into play. And um, as I said, like we do a lot of fusion work as well. So obviously in a small apartment, you can't go with a single theme because obviously everyone wants storages and things but uh thing themes which are born out of uh, modern and contemporary and uh if they are out of uh, other other countries they are more pro prone to be uh, according to their living status or their living lifestyle so like um if we are building a house and uh, if we say that we will build a very minimalistic kitchen and we won't have like a real big glass hob or we don't have like full height storages and all. Not going to work in India because Indian everyone cooks at home and they do require a lot of storage and a lot of um, working space in the kitchens and all. So that time we do a lot of fusion work as well. So we fuse like classic contemporary with contemporary. We fuse a lot of, uh, we have also done a Gothic themed house. So we have fused contemporary with Gothic. So as you might know, the Gothic themes have a lot of dark colors and they are very rich upholstery and all those things. So those we have merged together and uh, the planning wow. is a very open contemporary planning, but the materials mm -hmm. used are towards inclining towards Gothic finishes. So that, wow. that we merged a lot of, do a lot of fusions as well, rustic and modern fusions. So, well, yeah, if you I'll get the, I'd love to see photos. 
Yeah, you said modern person. Gothic, right? Modern yes. Gothic. That like kind of blows my mind. <laughs> I'm thinking, wow. Yeah, I'd love to see photos. I think that's exciting. I think that's great. And then actually, I'm just going to throw away all the questions because you have just come alive. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So that's what we're trying to help by having the questions ahead. And it's like, but actually, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, because you did. I mean, it's like, yeah, that is fantastic. See, it's because you're operating in what it is that you love and you're sharing it. And that's what this that's what this whole thing is about. That's how Tracy and I got together to begin with, was just wanting to share that. And so thank you so much for just being open and, and sharing all of that. That was fantastic. You have been a good audience. You have been very patient. I know I have been just blabbering <laughs> around them. You have surely been very patient. So good. So good. Yes, and, and, very nice. And that's really what we want to what we want to see is you just mm -hmm. being you and telling us about the thing that you love to do. And you know, it's very inspiring to us as well. Mm -hmm. Very much so. <laughs> And so is there anything else you would like to tell us about Menachi that is important to you to have people know about your work or about, about India, about Pune, about Mohiti? Okay, let me start with my myself, like my family or my dad or my upbringing for that matter. That uh, I have been very, uh, very lucky to have the kind of family which I have because they have never raised me as a girl. Because in India, there is obviously a lot of differentiations between girl and boy, and how they are raised and what their values are and everything. Even though it's changing now, but me being from the previous generation, so I'm working since 15 years, so you might imagine I'm from the previous generation. So <laughs> from that, being from that generation, I still had my independence and I was always encouraged to take my own decisions and to do what I want to do. So the, my parents did taught me that whatever you do or whatever you say for that matter, that it will have circumstances and you should be ready to face those circumstances. So that is something brought a lot of value to my work. This is something I said, like those values put into me has, has taught me that whatever you say is going to have circumstances. And if you are not ready to face those circumstances, don't say it. So those things really helped me a lot in my profession. There have been times where I've had a huge fight with my customers, but at the end of the project, they were like, good, we didn't listen, like you didn't listen to us and we went by your word. Otherwise the project would have gone, gone downhill from there. So yes, and it helps us get repeat customers also for that matter. Right? There have mm -hmm. been customers who have come to us after two, three years and said that uh, we want to get another house renovated or we want to get a shop renovated and we want you to do it. We don't even want to go to anyone else to check on them. Mm -hmm. So that really helps because they know whatever we say, we will deliver. So that is the reason people gain that trust. And in India, trust is very important. Like even if you're charging them extra money, we'll tell them that we are charging you extra money and ask them for money. They will trust us more rather than us saying, no, we'll give you cheap and then by some way we get that money out of them. So people do also come to us saying that your services are expensive than others. We have lesser offers. Uh, but as I said, like the end of the project, they're more than happy and willing to pay us that extra amount just because of the quality and the proficiency right. of the work. So that that really helps. So that mm -hmm. that is as I said, like I, I give total credit to my parents for my upbringing because they have got brought me up that way I have those models in me and uh, that helps me in my profession uh, plus yes uh, there was a time when I was not very happy being an architect like when I was studying and there used to be submissions and late nights and all those things and to be like I don't want to be an architect dad is an architect so I've become an architect but uh, yes being in the profession I thoroughly enjoy it obviously every profession has its uh, challenges no doubt mm -hmm. But uh, the uh, but the benefit of uh, having those challenges is you keep constantly growing. You don't get stagnant any time point of time. So mm -hmm. that uh, that surely is something very exciting for me also. Plus I get to meet very interesting new people every time I go out. 
So all of yeah. my clients are very different and they're from uh, different nationalities, from different states, from different age groups. So there's always something new to learn and uh, to get connected to. And um, I get to design their homes. As last time I said, in India, getting interiors done is not a commercial aspect. It is more of an emotional aspect. So when mm -hmm. you're getting your house done. So that is something I feel blessed that I can actually give them something which they are happy about and which makes them happy. And uh, when they're living in it, they feel, feel good about it every day. So that is something which also keeps me motivated as well. So that is that's a good thing I feel. So that is why the inclination towards residential, I guess, for the commercial, because I get to touch a lot of lives that way. And, that's uh, wonderful. It it helps you travel also. So that is one of my another passion. I love to travel. So for work, if you get to travel for work, what better than that? So it's Even so good. And do you have brothers and sisters? But I didn't get you. Do you have brothers and sisters? I, I'm the single child, so I'm ah. the only one. Yeah. So you had to become an architect almost. Yes. <laughs> of course, to, to yes. keep the family business going. That's wonderful. Yes. But then still I'm working with a lot different genre of work than what my dad does. But yeah, it's still the same field. There you go. And are there a lot of female architects in, in India? Uh, not a lot. Uh, architecture is still a very male-dominant profession in India still. Interiors, yes. Interiors, uh, mostly women do interiors. Male, there are very less people, uh, males, who do interior designing. That that balance is a little off. So as uh, if you are doing for architectural work, then uh, it is more of a male-dominant society. Mm -hmm. If you were a young woman who is thinking about going into architecture, what would you tell them, Manakshi? Not just any young woman, for anyone who wants to go in architecture, I can only tell them that architecture is not as glamorous as it seems. People think architecture is like you sit in a lavish office and just make nice drawings and the paperwork and it all gets done. It's not at all like that. It is very hard work and you have to get your hand dirty and to get be successful like or to make a niche also for that matter. So it is really hard work. So until and unless you are ready to put in your hundred percent, please don't do it. Right, right. Yeah. That's great advice to anybody in any industry, really, because in all design or all, you know, as we know in home staging too, Bobby, people love the outcome. They love the yes. product. They don't understand what it takes to get there, though. No. That's right. That's it. And honestly. The sign I think of a true professional is they don't really realize everything that you've done to make it happen. And I love what you were saying, Manakshi, about they love the outcome and they might be disgruntled along the way, but they in the end love the outcome. It's that is we as professionals, whatever it is that we decide to do, and there's point A to point B. What they're paying for, what they've hired you for, is all that stuff in between. Because again, my definition of an expert is someone who knows the things you didn't know you needed to know. And so that's the process. That's what all of us are bringing to the table when people do hire us. And I can hear from your answers and your responses. And again, your passion about what you do, you really do take it to heart and you bring your best to the table. So um, I love to hear that about you. That's wonderful been such a pleasure to meet you, Minakshi. Mm -hmm. Yes. Same here, same here. The feeling's totally mutual. There you so go. So we look forward to meeting again in the future and mm -hmm. updating each other on mm -hmm. what's happening and uh, what's happening in Pune and so that we can, um, you know, so that we can all stay in touch and 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 really find this international community of, you know, designers, architects, home stages, and really be getting people talking to each other and helping each other out. So that's a nice, a nice world to create. Yes. So I think creative people are the ones who can really 
who should really run the world actually rather than <laughs> a much better place it would be really oh so now instead of the occupied home we'll just call the show world domination <laughs> <laughs> one home at a time <laughs> that's, that's good that's, that's good so well i'm bobby mcgrath i'm the occupied consultation specialist here in raleigh north carolina and i'm tracy mcleod with house proud home sellers in australia and we have been speaking with minakshi mohite from pune india Yay! thank you thank you thank you and this has been the occupied home. Thanks again, everybody. See you soon.